Hi, my name is Lauren Ferreri. I'm the uh, wildlife management uh, specialist here at Middle Creek Wildlife Management Area. And my roles here are uh, all the biological duties and I also oversee all the visitor center operations. Uh, today we are going to be talking to you about morning dove banding. So morning doves are a small game species, which means they can be hunted. And we're gonna actually show you the process of what banding means. And that's just basically putting a small bracelet on the wrist of the dove. And the reason why we do this is to track their populations. Since they are a game species, we want to make sure that we're not over harvesting them and we want to make sure that their populations are healthy. By banding these birds, we can actually track harvest rates from hunters and track their populations over time to give us a picture of how healthy their populations are. Without further ado, we're going to go and check our traps and see what we got. So we have two doves here in our traps. Um, so when you walk up to the doves, they have a tendency to be fairly skittish. So you might see them flapping around a lot and that's normal for the situation we're in. So I'll quickly remove them from the traps. I'm going to put them in this bag. Um, as soon as you take away their sight, they have a tendency to calm down a little bit. Um, and then I'll explain to you uh, how they go into the trap and uh, we'll actually show you the banding process too. So these are our morning dove traps. Um, so they're not very large and they don't have a bottom on them as you can see. So what we do is uh, we'll take a bait, which in this case this is called safflower, small seed that they will feed on, and we'll put that um, in an area without the trap. Get them used to coming into the area where the bait is without the traps here. And then we'll set the traps nearby so they can get used to the traps being here. Eventually you put the traps on top of the bait and what they'll do is they'll follow these bait trails we have made for them through this opening, through here, and then they can't figure out how to get back out. Uh, and so then they're stuck, stuck in there. And then there's a little door as you saw earlier when I was removing them that opens that allows me to get them out. Uh, doves are not a very smart animal. They only have very small brains, so um, they, they can't figure out how to get back out. But also, we usually set these traps and then uh, go do something else and then come back to it. So uh, if you're sitting here watching the doves, they have a tendency to pass the opening a few dozen times before they actually go in. Um, so you can imagine you'd uh, get pretty bored sitting here watching them, waiting for them to go in. But this is, and so by that, um, the reason we call this a passive trap, meaning we're not actively sitting on it, but we do keep other things in mind. So today um, it's about uh, 8.45 right now and it's getting a little warm already. So we set these either the night before or really early in the morning and then doves will feed here uh, in, in the early a.m. Uh, it's getting a little warm now, so I will pull these traps. We don't want the, the doves in there when it's really hot out. Um, it stresses them out and we want to make sure that they're healthy when they leave. Um, but the things that we're looking at when we're looking for a site for dove banding are you want to have um, a food source nearby. So we have the food with the bait. You want to have a water source nearby. Um, we'll talk about this a little later, but we're at Middle Creek Wildlife Management Area where there's a lot of water uh, on the property. And then uh, we ha we're in a stone area right now, and that is good for them picking grit. So doves have something called a crop, and it's basically a small compartment in their throat that allows them to digest their food a little bit better. Uh, they pick grit from these stones to help them digest that food. So that's why they really like this stone area here, and that's why we trap doves here. Um, so add all that together, it makes a perfect site for trapping doves. Um, so we have our doves, we've explained the traps, so we'll actually go back and show you the banding process now. So we're back at the truck, we're banding the doves now, and I'm going to show you what our, our dove bands look like. Each one of these bands has a nine digit number on it that is specific to that band. Uh, so no other bird will actually ever get this band, that number. On the band itself, there's actually a website on there, it's reportband.gov. 
And so if you or somebody you know were to find this bird, you could go to that website, put that band number in. Uh, you might not know what it was, but if you put that band number in, it'll tell you information about what kind of species it was, in this case a morning dove, uh, where it was banded, in this case Middle Creek, um, how long ago it was banded, and if it was a boy or a girl. So um, pretty cool information that you can get just from a small uh, single single uh, piece of aluminum here. What I typically do is get the band ready before I get the doves out. Um, it makes it a little bit easier when you're handling, especially if there's only one person. This pliers here is specific to this size band. So uh, if I can squeeze that band as hard as I want on the morning dove's leg and it will never overlap the band, it'll only close it to where um, it's just meeting each other here. So I'm gonna open that band up just enough so that it can go on the bird's foot. And I'll set that band in the pliers. So I mentioned different sizes of bands. So this pliers, if, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 3A on it. So this is a size 3A band. The larger the number, the larger the band. So for example, if you were banding Canada geese, they're actually a size 8. If you're banding um, something smaller, like a, a song sparrow, um, they're going to be maybe in the size 1 or 0 range. So just to give you an example of sizes there. Alright, so we'll get our doves out now. And see how much more calm they are in the bag. Okay, so the first thing we always do is band the bird because if the bird gets away from you, at least it had a band on it. So um, general rule of thumb is that we always band the bird on the right foot. It's just kind of a protocol thing. So I'm gonna take this band, stick his foot in the middle there and squeeze. And like I said, I'm not gonna squeeze as hard as I can, but I could and it would never um, overlap that band on the bird's foot. All right, so the band is completely closed. All right, so that's step one. He has his band on there and we wanna make sure our band number is what we have on our band sheet. So our last three digits are 083, which is coinciding with the next band we're putting on here. You can see that blank space next to 81083. Band's on, so we're good to go with that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is determine the age of this guy. So um, when doves are born um, and as they grow their feathers out, their feathers have a tendency to get this white tipping on it. And the way that I like to explain it is it's similar to the tip of your, um, your finger when your nail grows out. So if you're looking at these feathers here and these feathers here, and as I pull his wing out, you can see there's a tipping white or uh, lighter colored tip on those feathers. That indicates that this bird was born this past spring or summer. So this is what we call a hatch year bird, meaning it was hatched this year. Different, those feathers there that have that white tipping on them or buffy colors on the edging. So that's an indicator of the fact that it's a younger bird. Now when it's a younger bird, we cannot um, tell if it's male or female. So we just put unknown if it's a boy or a girl. Um, so we know it's a young bird, it's an unknown sex or male or female, it's unknown. Um, and the next thing we're going to be looking at is what we call the molt. So the molt is what feather the bird is actually replacing at that current time. Um, when I say replacing, I mean that the feather, the old feather fell out and a new feather is growing back in. So as I pull out his wing, you can kind of see the feathers to the right over here have a browner coloration to them compared to these few feathers over here. And if you look really closely, you can see this little feather coming in right there. So it's kind of confusing, but uh, we count starting. So there's these group of feathers here are called primary feathers. So if you're looking at the wing of a dove, you have your primaries, your secondaries. So when you're counting primary feathers, there's 10 of them and you start from 10 on the outside counting to one going towards the secondaries. So this is primary 10, primary nine, primary eight, seven, six, five, four, 
which means he is molting his third primary, that little guy right there. Okay, so his molt is three. Uh, we take that information just to see uh, how old the individual bird is and individual variation within the uh, for the molt process. So, um, but it's just another extra piece of the the puzzle that we we look at. So, this is a young bird. It's an unknown male or female, and it's a molt of three. And that's all the information we take. Uh, he has his band on, so he's ready to go. So this is a young dove, and so young doves are called squabs, S-Q-U-A-B. So this is a, a squab, and you can tell from all those buffy color feathers here that have those tipping tips on them or edges. And that's all we need from him, so we can let him go. So to do that, all I need to do is just open up my hands. Off he goes. Always very important to write your data down as well. So we had a molt of three on the last guy. He was a hatchier bird, which means that we don't know if he was a male or a female. And he was banded at Middle Creek, which on for me, that's, that's location A. And today is the 13th. So 7, 13, 20. All these other birds were banded last Friday. So we've banded quite a few birds. I get 50 bands a year that I need to put out and I'm already over halfway, which is a great start. We have um, one more band to put out. We have two doves that we caught this morning. So the bands on this string are in sequence. So the next one, I mentioned the last three digits were 083 on the previous one. This one is 084. Open this band up. Get it ready for the next bird. And so a lot of you guys might be wondering why we're doing this. So the biggest reason, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that these species, these birds are game species. So which means they can be hunted. And we want to make sure that the Game Commission, the agency that I work for, is the state wildlife, uh, wildlife agency. So we oversee all wild birds and wild mammals. We want to make sure we're doing our due diligence to make sure all of our populations of wildlife are as healthy as can be. All right, so you might notice right off the, uh, um, the beginning here that this bird looks a little bit different than the last one did. So I'll show you what that means, but first we'll get the band on him just in case he gets away from us. Sometimes these bands get stuck in my pliers. Okay. See the band's completely closed. You don't have to worry about it getting stuck on anything. And a lot of scientists have done studies already to show that these bands do not impact the birds at all. There's such a minute amount of weight that um, we don't see any impacts. But we also catch birds from time to time that already have a band on them, and we call those recaptures. Uh, so the recaptures are really interesting information because just like if you were to find a bird with a band on, we can take that number and figure out how long ago it was banded. So um, bands on, which is good. So we're going to look at this guy and look at his wing to see if he has any young feathers. So as I pull his wing out here, you're going to notice there's not any of that buffy edging that that previous bird had. So all of his feathers are nice and dark. So overall, really nice coloration as I turn his wing here. And the other thing we're going to look at too is the front of him here. I don't want to lose him. So if you look in the sun, he has this really pink rosy breast color and a really cool like bluish gray color on his head. Um, so those are all signs that this bird is an adult and a male. So. We didn't see any of those, um, t any of the tipped feathers like on the other one. Put it in the sun, that helps. Um, so this bird is an older bird, an after hatch year, meaning it was born before this past year. So it's at least in its second year of life. We don't go beyond that. We just age hatch year and after hatch year. So he's an older bird and based off his coloration, that blue crown on his head and then the rosy coloration on his breast, uh, it's a sign that it's a male. 
We don't really catch a lot of adult females here at Middle Creek. Um, could be for multiple reasons, but the males are usually a little bit more competitive. And so that's, we think that that's why we catch more males than females. So I'm going to put down that he is a after hatch here and he's a male. And I need to figure out his molt now. So as I pull out his wing, you guys remember the primaries, we start counting with 10. So this is primary 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and right here you'll notice there's a small gap, and it's kind of hard to see, but um, he has already replaced this feather here. So that's uh, P3. So he actually has the same mold as the last guy did, and I'll just recount to make sure. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. This is three. Another way you can tell what molt they have is to look at the back side of their feathers. And if you see the, the see how this feather here is much longer than that feather is. So you can see that he's growing that one out. And they have what's called pin feathers. So if I you can see that there's a little sheath around that feather growing out. Right there, like a little casing. That's called in pin, meaning this bird is actually molting that feather right now. So that is a molt of three. So even though he's older, he has the same molt as that younger bird did. So they're pretty, uh, doves don't get a lot of credit for being um, attractive birds, but the males certainly are. They have this, like I said, that really pretty rose coloration on their breast. They get this iridescent coloration on their neck right here. Females will be much more drabby brown. They're not going to have this pretty blue coloration on their head or the that pink rosy breast. They're just going to kind of be just brownish in color, similar to the squab, but without the buffy tipping. And the reason for that is because they're the ones that are going to sit on the nest primarily, so they want to be as camouflaged as possible to avoid predators. All right, we're going to let him go. So just like the other one, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is put them in your hand and off he goes. That's it. Um, just a few other things to mention uh, when we're trapping. So I am permitted through uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, the Bird Banding Lab, to band doves. So this isn't something that I just do for fun, um, although it is enjoyable to do. But um, we want to make sure that people aren't trying this at home. Uh, there is a reason that we're doing this, and it's for research. So. Um, I am permitted through our state and through the federal government to do this. The other thing that we try to keep in mind when we're banding is that we want to make sure the birds are healthy uh, when they come in and healthy when they leave. So we want them to have normal lives um, even though we're putting a little bracelet on them. When we talk about the traps, I mentioned the heat already, but we want to make sure we're not putting uh, traps in areas where we know that there's a lot of predators. So for instance, if there's cats or um, places where we know there's raccoons or a large amount of hawks in the area. We want to avoid those areas, um, but we want to make sure that morally, you know, we're, these birds would not be in these traps as, if it wasn't for us. So we want to make sure that they leave, like I said, as healthy as they go. Uh, occasionally we find a few different things that are interesting. So we might find birds that have like gross on their feet, um, pre-existing injuries, that kind of thing. Um, if that's the case, we usually don't ban those birds because they have less of a likelihood to survive. Um, but we do have um, antibiotic cream that we use in case the birds do get beat up in the trap. These two birds were very healthy, no issues. Um, but every now and then they, they get a little br um, like a brush burn on their on their wings, on their shoulders, and we can put this on there. So, um, but great day. It's getting a little warm now, so we I'm um, glad we pulled our traps, um, and we'll, we'll try again tomorrow.